Radovid had many faults. He was cruel, impetuous, and pathologically ambitious. But he was a tactical genius. That's undeniable. Commanding forces far outnumbered by his foes, he handily defeated the invader from the south. The Redanian eagle spread its wings, taking all the north, including Novigrad, beneath them. With victory in the war against Nilfgaard secured, Radovid proceeded to complete his witchment. As they had in Novigrad, pyres burned into Meria and Edirne, lands now liberated by the Redanian monarch. In the drive for moral renewal, simple herbalists, pellers, healers, and non-humans, all supposed heretics, were murdered in droves. For many, freedom beneath Radovid's scepter proved more tragic than servitude to another. As long as his armies went from one victory to the next, Emir's subjects remained boundlessly obedient. When a string of humiliating defeats proved our envies fallible, the opposition, thus far secret, attacked. The subjects of the Emperor who had danced on the graves of his foes laid him to rest in a tomb of his own. Many islanders believed Svanriga would be no more than his ambitious mother's puppet. The young king proved them wrong, ignoring her whims and ruling with an iron hand all his own. Tired of the Jarls and their endless feuds, he resolved to turn the Isles into an absolute monarchy, modeled after those of the continent. What he resolved, he achieved, but only by shedding his countrymen's blood. As for Siri, that's hard to say, since the events on Wundvik she is yet to be seen. 